What's going on guys? This is Ozzy Van Man. How y'all doing today? Now I'm here in Munns Park, Arizona, escaping that heat from the fierce Phoenix, Arizona desert. Now what we're here for today is to show you a couple of tips for getting prepared for the heat, the summer, and how best to survive in hot areas. If you're finding yourself stuck in a hot area, not necessarily Arizona, could be anywhere. But uh, we'll go through what I do and different things you can do to stay cool and survive this summer. Okay, so first thing I wanna go over is insulation. Now, I have on all my windows, this uh, reflector stuck around the windows to keep some of that heat from coming in to the cabin. It acts as insulant. I do have inside some of the walls as well. I do have um, the hemlock wool uh, packed into some of the cavities in the walls and uh, that also helps a uh, little reminder though uh, once the heat does get into those things then they hold heat that's the way insulation works it blocks it out but then during the night it holds it so if you're trying to cool down in the night sometimes that'll actually hold heat during the night um, especially in arizona in the middle of summer we're getting like 115 degree days it can be quite hard to cool down in the night even if it starts to cool down so getting that temperature back into your van you'll need something for that as well what i also find is uh vans with windows or more windows than other vans they tend to turn into a pretty fierce oven uh, the vans without the windows on the back the cargo carriers they tend to stay a bit cooler these windows tend to act like ovens um, so I'm actually looking at, even though I have that insulation on the inside, I'm actually looking at getting white vinyl and covering some of these windows that I don't use in white vinyl to deflect some of that heat off of there. Now, as you can, guys can see, I have solar panels on my roof, so I need to be in the sun to continue to create power for my rig. Unfortunately, that means I have to be parked in full sun. Now, if you don't have solar panels, if you're not needing to create um, solar power, a clear way of um, staying cool is finding a shaded area. Um, my overall um, tip would be if you can move with the weather, move with the weather and stay in a cooler area. If I wasn't stuck full time in Phoenix, I would probably spend my entire summers in cooler areas like I am right here. It's uh, much cooler up north in Arizona in the summer. And I think today it got to a high of like 75. But what I will tell you is inside the van, it will always be at least 10 degrees hotter inside the van. So even though it was 75 out here, it was almost, I wanna say, uh, got close to 90 degrees inside on the thermos uh, on the uh, thermometer so uh, keep that in mind it'll always be warmer inside so you want to get some uh, fresh air circulating in there now I also have uh, to help circulate some of that air and it's running right now we're gonna take a look at it I have a maxi fan mounted on my roof as you can see we've got this mounted up onto my roof I cut a hole in my roof and mounted this maxi fan in there and that's continuously pulling cool air into my van during the day too also i'll have my side doors open when i'm sitting around to try help get some of that air in there there's a breeze coming through now so that also helps um what i'll also tell you is if you park your if you have to be in full sun for your uh, solar panels if you park the opposite side of your doors towards the sun and have these side away from the sun you can still have them open and get a bit of fresh air in there and you can use the shade outside to sit in the shade i'm also going to put an awning up here at some point when i get the chance it really depends where you're staying um, if you're staying out in the desertous areas where it can get 115 Staying in the van isn't an option, even with air conditioning. It, the air conditioners just struggle when these, these things turn into a full-on furnace. If it's 115 degrees outside, this thing's like 130 degrees inside the van, and it's just, you cannot stay in there. Uh, I have a small window unit, uh, like a window AC unit, 
mounted through the side wall. I've cut a hole in the wall, which I'll show you shortly. Um, now, in a full force of the day, that's only going to drop the internal temperature by about 10 degrees, uh, maybe 15 max. And if it's 130 in there, you still got 115 degree in there. And the AC will actually struggle in the heat and overheat. So, um, learnt through trial and error. Um, I am actually looking at putting a mini split into my van at some point. So another thing, as I said before, the air conditioner, you can see right here where I've cut out a vent and put a vent on there. I still haven't finished the install there, but that's where the hot air actually vents out from my air conditioner. And there's a shore power that I uh, hook up that I hooked up through my wall as well. Now, as you can see, we have a power line coming through. There's my generator. Now, normally, I'd have my generator a lot further away because it's noisy and it creates fumes. Um, I've just got this set up so I can show you guys what kind of setup that I got, that I have. Um, so yeah, air conditioner is key if you're gonna stay in a hot area. A lot of people ask if like a swamp cooler or those mini little Walmart $40 uh, swamp cooler type things will do the job or a portable air conditioner and stuff like that. If you're staying in a place like I am in Phoenix, Arizona, or any desertous area that's full heat, full sun, nothing but an air conditioner will cut it. And even my 5500 uh, 5, BTU air conditioner won't cut it in Arizona heat. Um, hence why on the weekends I go north. But basically I have to run the generator all night long uh, to keep it cool in there. At some point, it's going to be over 100 degrees all through the night in the uh, desert. So a generator and an air conditioner is a must. And a generator, because even with all the solar I have, that air conditioner drains my battery so quick. Um, I just can't keep up with it. So I'd need more battery bank if I was going to run everything off of there and that's a lot of money for those batteries now additionally something else i have this is for winter and for summer i found this at bisbee arizona when i went to a meetup someone had one of these on their rig now it's an external window cover so this will stop your uh you can mount it on the outside it'll stop your uh windows from icing over so you won't have ice to scrape off in the morning and it'll also stop direct heat going onto those windows. It won't stop all of the heat going through, but it'll stop those windows from turning into an absolute furnace. So I do put this over the front so it stops the front cab from heating up. I also have a wall divider dividing the cab from the back. It doesn't stop all the hot air from going back there, but it will create a smaller space for the air conditioner to have to cool, which means more cool for me. As you can see, I have my uh, th uh, thermometer hanging on the wall here, so I can keep an accurate uh, idea of what temperature inside the van it is at all times. Now, another thing I would highly recommend, hydration. Now, not just hydration, if you have your water source sitting in your van and your van gets up to 115, 130 degrees during the day, you're stuck drinking like hot hot water and that's not going to be fun when you're already feeling hot yourself and you're trying to keep cool so a fridge i have a fridge to keep all my drinks cold so it really helps out when you are out in the desert and you're dying from heat and you need to stay hydrated and cool those cold drinks are going to be a lifesaver guys also keeping your fridge cool is another problem in the middle of the desert, in the middle of summer, this thing will have problems and overheat and potentially break down. It'll, the more it has to work to keep cool, it'll also drain your battery. That happened to me last summer and I learnt from that. So typically during the day, I'll try to take this out, um, have it plugged in somewhere else and then um, I'll put it back in when I leave, go back out to the desert and uh, usually I'll have my doors open to keep some fresh air circulating onto the fridge so it can do its thing and stay cool inside now of course not everybody's going to be staying in 
Phoenix, Arizona. Not everybody's going to be staying in the desert. Uh, I'm sort of worst case scenario. I toughed it out last year in some of the hottest summers you'll get in the uh, United States. And it was very challenging and it almost brought me to breaking point. Another thing, and a lot of you might not think of this, something to get you through summer, get you through the hot time, is social interaction. I was so close to giving up so many times in that heat, just sitting outside my van waiting for na nightfall so I could put my air conditioner on and get cool again. Uh, I was struggling. And if I didn't have my friends there to support me and keep me busy, I don't know if I would have been able to do it. It really helped me get through, guys. So since social interaction, make sure you have a friend network that you can keep in contact with, especially if something goes wrong. Ideally, though, um, I work all week, I struggle through the week, and I get in my van and I bug out. I bug out to beautiful areas like Munns Park, Arizona, Mormon Lake, Arizona, Flagstaff, Arizona, northern areas full of pine, high elevation, a lot cooler in the summer. Uh, I think in the middle of summer, the hottest it gets is maybe 90 degrees, which is, you know, compared to Phoenix, it gets to like 115, sometimes 120. Um, so it's very, very tolerable out here compared to the rest of the area. Um, so, but not all of us have that option. I'm stuck here full time working in Phoenix. So when I can, I come up north. But ideally, if I could go anywhere, I'd either travel with the weather or I'd stay in the winter in the Phoenix or Southern area and stay in the summer in the Northern area. So having a plan like that, if you're free on wheels, don't be stuck in one spot just because it's your area. Make a plan to travel with the weather. Don't get in trouble. Don't risk your health, guys. All right, guys, so uh, that's my tips for surviving the summer. Hopefully it's given you some insight how I do it and how you could possibly do it too if you're finding yourself stuck in a hot environment this year. Comment below, guys. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. What areas are you staying this summer and how do you deal with the heat, especially in a van life setting? If you're uh, full-time or even if you're not full-time, if you're part-time but you have to travel to get to a cooler area or if you're stuck in a hotter area when you do do part-time. Uh, let me know below what your tips and tricks are and what you do and what you have experienced in previous years or currently are experiencing. All right, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you took something from this video. You know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. And until next time, guys, this is Aussie Van Man. And here in beautiful Munns Park, Arizona, I love, I love the pine forest. It's so beautiful out here. We'll see you later. What's going on here?